we'll, we're going to go from basically just a blank piece of illustration board here. So this is the Crescent Hot Press. We've been using it for all of these. I think it's 5 by 7 is the size on this. Now, I don't know if I, I think I can go a little bit further away here. That's about as far away as I can get. And we got to talk about composition. Composition is a big deal. And here, I'm actually going to get this, my magnifier, out of the way here, if you don't mind. That's a little better. So think of dividing this into essentially nine parts here. Let's do something like this. And we'll just do this gently. We don't have to go too crazy. There we go. So we've got this divided into nine parts, right? You see these four points right here? We talk about center of interest all the time when we're doing 2D art. We also talk about that with miniatures because guess what? The two are pretty much interchangeable. They really are. That's one of the reasons I've been focusing on these so much. We'll, we'll get to the palette and the other stuff in just a bit. But with every time I do one of these two... Hi, ah, Grim. How you doing? Uh, I think, yeah, this is about an hour, right? Uh, I was almost tempted to start a few minutes earlier. I just wanted to double check and see if Armored Wolf w was doing okay out there in Alaska at his uh, fishing expedition, which is going well. I think they're just four fish away from... Uh, the total quantity of their catch so they're doing really well up there now these four look it doesn't matter which way you're holding this painting whichever way it is this way this way it doesn't matter you want your center of interest to not be in the center you also don't want it to way the heck out over here right you want it one of these areas and when we look at this well guess what pretty much your two areas of interest are here probably over here too really not in the center certainly not any major interest off here on the sides right basically here and oh look pretty much corresponds to this area here and grim i hope that you're doing well uh well it's still thursday here so i'm still going to say happy thursday for 19 more minutes then it's going to be happy friday unless it's not that where everybody else lives it doesn't have to be exactly at that point but you can see it's in the neighborhood right at that point Oh, here we go. Look at this. So that point falls right about here. Not too shabby, right, for our center of interest. And it was the same deal for our Mordor and for our Minas Tirith. Oh, yeah, look at look at where this is hitting. Right about there. <clears throat> and then, oh, look, this one. It's hitting right about here. Uh, it's that boy Grim. Uh, oh, that's right. That's your... Uh, <laughs> So if you went from the fires to that, or did the, the fire, uh, does it put so much ash and dust in the sky that that kind of starts to hook on to moisture droplets and bring that down? But, uh, so sorry about that, Grim. I hope that you're going to be safe and okay through all that. Boy, this, uh, I think we could just use, I don't know, like 20 years with no rain, which is mostly happening in some areas, but we could use that broader application of no rain. I think that would be very cool. Uh, might lead to the reduction in some water levels and maybe a little power electric, uh, power generation, but, you know, some things must be sacrificed, right? What we don't want to sacrifice here is our two Argonauts. Now, this is a tricksy little thing here because, well, as you can see from the references, there's a gap between these two guys. What we have to essentially do is shift it this way a little bit, and you see where we've got this shadow over here and then this lighter tone over here? We're going to have to try and get our center of interest over in one of these two areas over here. <laughs> Armored Wolf, hey, there, Armored Wolf, how the heck are you doing? Uh, Grim, Grim cares not for the rain. He lives on the higher ground. So Grim, is, Grim should be all good. Here, let's just, uh, again, we're just going to throw a little bit of a quickie sketch thing going on here. Let's have you go up to there. Let's have you go here. And then uh, what are we going to do with our water level here? Where's that, where's that going to be? Maybe here. And uh, we've got our other Argonoth here. Uh, let's see. All right, well, thanks. Uh, I'm not sure how the heck that happened, but let's go see if we can fix that here. How's that? Or do we have it here or here? Or here, we can move. Look at this. It's a motion chat. There we go. 
or maybe we'll just leave it over there for right now. Uh, for whatever reason, lately when I go to do my screens, it really just kind of messes everything up. I have no idea why, but, well, that's because Streamlabs OBS, if I was to rate that on a minus 200 to maybe a 10, with 10 being good and minus 200 being pretty much almost unusable, I would made it like a rate it like a minus 300. So thank you so much, Grim, for that. And Armored Wolf, yeah, that fire. I wasn't kidding when I was talking about playing that fire on a loop, because. And thanks so much for the video and the sound. I think I think you knew the sound is, is that was another thing that I was after, right? There's just something about that sound. Ah, you just gotta love it, don't you? All right, so we'll have this one. That cliff be taller than that cliff. Actually, I'm gonna go back to my my reference that I can see here a little bit better. All right, let's go. His head's right here, shoulder there, and then ah, it does sort of okay. And then we've got shadow coming down like so. Oh, that's actually his arm is actually casting a shadow there too. It looks like. And then we've got ah, this bit right here ah and this one cuts in front of it too very nice ah this is really interesting the way the robe here actually kind of almost hangs over a bit so you know, again either way we put this we also have to come up with a decent light and dark pattern get this down this way and we'll come forward a bit and I think we're going to drop this water line down to about here. So something like this. Uh, oh, and his, uh, let's get his, uh, let's work on his arm here a little bit. We don't get a chance to do a whole lot of drawing on our streams, do we? Uh, maybe if it's a freehand design or whatever, but other than that, that's about it. So you're down to, what, four, four fishies left? Four fishies under the sea? Soon, those fishies are going to be food for you and Charity. Aha, huh, how's that? See, look at that rhyme. Look at that rhyme. That is, that's pretty epic wordcraft right there. Are they both? No, nope. this one actually down this way a bit. I, I tell you, at some point, it really would be fun to make these as terrain pieces. I, I'm not quite sure how that would work. I'm not quite sure how that will work, but boy, it could be some epic. It would be epic foam. It would be epic foam sculpture. Actually, I got to look into more of that kind of sculpting foam, because I think that would be really cool. All right, so ah, okay, so ah, that's what this is. That's his arm. That's what that is. Okay, so it's it's like he's basically grabbing onto the cliffside over here. You know, I think it would be more interesting if this cuts in front of this, actually. So we're going to make a little change right there. Ah, the scribble, how you doing? Well, we're scribbling a little bit here. We're doing a little bit of scribble before we get to our painting. Yeah, and, and the scribble, I had not, well, I actually still haven't had a chance to read the books yet, uh, even though we've studied the heck out of everything. But... Uh, I think when uh, Andy Circus, what is that, September, they're releasing the audio books with Andy Circus doing the audio. I I think we'll, that way I can actually listen to those while I'm exercising. Now, sadly, they won't have the appendices in them, but that's where all of my lore videos come in, and they have been really fantastic for just uh, creating a lot of information for me to work with. Okay. You know, it, it it did lead for me to, uh, some questions for me as to okay if this basically marks the basically the starting point of Gondorian territory, I mean basically the the orcs have really pretty much penetrated in this part of Gondorian territory if they're if they're on the one bank because the and I wonder if this did the did the Corsair ships pass by these on their way up to. Uh, Minas Tirith. I mean, they must have. Here, let's uh, 
Again, keep, let's kind of define this. Oh, you know what? We need to, I think we'll back off on this one. Yes, we'll back off on this one. We'll let this go further because I would like to have my water over here. So we'll back off on this. Let's just have his robes come down like so. What is that? Is that the inside of his sleeve right there? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Scribbler, uh, or Scribble, what I've done is on, on YouTube, there's all these really fantastic lore videos that basically take things like the appendices, the Silmarillion, the, the Lost Tales, the, the notes, the letters. They, they basically compile all of that stuff into a, a little bit easier to absorb uh, narrative there, um, information that I've really enjoyed using. Because, like, all the stuff, the war in the north that they really just don't go into, which is, uh, that's pretty much confirmed that's going to be the next GW book. Because, you know, Armored Wolf, uh, you saw those new Lord of the Rings figures, right? I think, or did you send me pictures of those? I think you already sent me pictures of those. But, yeah, there's a whole bunch of, it's all, you know, Men of Dale, that kind of thing. So, that's definitely War of the North. With all the Iron Hills dwarves they've done, like Old Dane... And then those new Easterlings, there's that pretty much settles it. Obviously, the information that uh, Armored Wolf was showing me had a lot to do with the Warhammer Old World, which I'm, I don't know, it's got to be at least a year and a half, two years, 18 months away, something like that. Yeah, these are a lot of cliffs here, so maybe we need to... Uh, Make sure we draw these as cliffs, and maybe that's not the shadow of his arm. It is the shadow of his arm. I thought so. Here, let's make sure we get our a nice little place for a shadow to be here. So just, I'm going to take a, this time I want to remember to take a picture of this thing. Yeah, Crom, of course I've moved them all to somewhere else. Let me see if I can find these here. Yeah, so here's our... There's those new Easterlings right here. We've got, well, we have all six of them prepped. Uh, oh, this is, uh, well, here's some of the commission stuff here. We've got a whole bunch of uh, ring rates, but then we also have these uh, Rivendell Guard right here. One or both of those things, that'll probably be the subject of the Saturday stream. All right, so I'm just going to take me a quick picture of that because I forgot pretty much, oh, I think I remember what the Mordor one but I completely forgot with my Minas Morgul. So I don't want to forget that, because that could be a very useful little piece of information to have right there. Yeah, so Cromnius, I think it was, well, they have the Old Dane with this Iron Axe and everything, and then they have the King of Dale and all these Knights of Dale. So definitely, that's I'm sure that's what it's going to be about. It has to be. Huh. Well, we'll all be very upset if there's not... Uh, a war in the north book forthcoming that's for sure okay here's we'll just go more vertical with that to just uh mark what that we need that to be and then we've got his helmet here like so good enough now we've got some of our bigger brushes here we got look at this is one of our homemade filberts right here and these are both the royal lang nickels uh, so Grim, all that stuff was looking really neat. I, I have to say, you those uh, those those jars that you did look really, really, ama really amazing. Okay, here's our palette. And there's really nothing fancy here. This is our usual opaque alley. Well, I guess I do have French Indian red instead of Terra Rosa, but we got our white, brilliant yellow, pale, cadmium yellow light. This is our diet cadmium yellow deep. That French Indian red. Then we got a Fanchon red over here. Uh, you got a cadmium scarlet and a cadmium orange. We won't be doing too much with those, probably. We got our Prussian blue over here, pearline black over here. This is the usual indigo, black spinel, Van Dyke brown, little Indian yellow over here. Yeah, Cromnius. Uh, now I'm I'm assuming those are probably going to be Forge World things, just like those Easterlings were. So, uh, I don't know. There's so much stuff coming out with the with the 3D printing guys. I just don't know if we need to invest in all that. But uh, maybe we do. It, it kind of depends. 
Yeah, Grim, they really do look fantastic, I have to say. Now, we want a cyan color. See, both of these images got that kind of cyan color. And we did the same in this sky. Actually, the, the sky is going to be pretty darn similar. What we saw in those is going to be pretty similar to this. Now, to do that, the Prussian blue is normally... That, that's a kind of a reddish blue right there. However, once you start to add a sufficient amount of this brilliant yellow pale, well, guess what? That starts to turn, oh, just a wee bit, just a wee bit more cyan, a little bit less red. And let's let's dive in here. Let's get this a little bit lighter even, and we might even throw in a little bit of our thinner there. And again, look at this uh, scumbling brush stroke that we're using. Again, this is just a hot press crescent illustration board. We don't want to don't want to get too much paint on here. And as you can see, we're even going to be covering up part of our drawing here because we need to have. Yeah. Oh, and uh, by the way, we can we could use if we wanted to. We could use makeup sponges and such here. We could do that to wipe away some paint. And see, we're again just kind of altering the color a little bit here. We'll let that that sky color go over their hands. Again, a little more of the scumbling. Maybe we lighten this up just a smidge over here. Like so. We have to let some of that atmosphere work its way into there. Here, let's get a little bit more of our brilliant yellow pale into that just to lighten that up. And we won't worry about the clouds just yet. This is more about setting the the tone here with their sky, how light do we want that to be? Yeah, I think we can certainly lighten this a bit more back here. There we go. And that's just going to kind of create our mist that's over here. Like so. And guess what? We can, uh, any brush can be a blending brush. It's one of the bigger blending brushes you've ever seen me use, probably. And now we need to establish some darks here, but we also still need... We still need our blue over here. Now, this is going to get a little bit more of our reddish Prussian blue in there, I think. Just a smidge more. Because any kind of uh, water reflection, well, it's going to be... Obviously, a, l a little bit darker and more grayed down than uh, the original, right? Than what it's re actually reflecting. It's always going to be a little bit grayer. All right, speaking of grays, let me make something here. A little bit of indigo mixed with some of this. Before we start to warm up this gray here. Uh, now, I think what I had done, oh, yeah, that's right. With the other landscapes, I actually stuck them on a board. I'm not going to, well, I'd, I'd prefer not to do that here. May mean that I get a little bit more paint on me, but is what it is. And it's going to, see how dry that brush is, right? Very dry. Hey, Megan, how you doing? Ah, so Megan, I, I saw you. Uh, you were, we uh, were watching the, the Pyro Club there. Uh, Big Jim and all the folks doing their, doing their role playing type stuff. That was very fun. So Megan, I hope that you guys are doing well. Okay, let's start to throw in some of the, warmer, grays over here now. We'll just, maybe steal a little bit of this. Terra Rosa over here. We throw a little bit of our indigo into that, and then maybe some of this 
lighter blue here because we just we want to have some of our dark here I'm just gonna get it like so and we'll say hi to Queez when I'm, I'm, it's late for you guys geez Megan it's got to be what one o'clock in the morning there it's got to be one o'clock in the morning for you guys so thanks for thanks for keeping me company so late for you guys it's interesting how dark this looks, even though it's really not all that dark. Everything is relative. And you're just trying to sneak a little bit of this uh, red color in here, just a, a bit of the Terra Rosa. You must have dark to show light. That's what we're doing here, just uh, sneaking in some darks before we come in there with our lighter stuff. So there's our, got the, the hands right here. And that is, you see it's starting to mix a little bit. Ah, well the, that's cool. I, again, I, I really do hope that you guys are, are doing great. But I don't wanna get too much uh, yellow into that. That could be problem city right there. It's got a little bit of a, greenish tone to it and maybe I uh, will let just a little bit of that orange get in here uh, what the heck will because we're gonna be coming in with our our lighter colors over the top of this anyway and if you look at the I mean you can go back check out the YouTube videos of the sessions that we did it was very much like this it was just uh, quite the mess that, that's not just for miniatures, the whole it must be messy before it can be neat. It's it's also it's also for 2D art. I'm just gonna snap a picture of this too. Because, you know, let's do that here. Hopefully I think I only had about three on the last one. I, I'm gonna try and get more than that here. Alright, where's my No, I don't want that much. I'm gonna get some of this. Some of the bluish gray in there. Back to my bluish gray. Might steal just a little bit of thinner to make that happen. Okay, that's more like it. There's also going to be a little bit of, well, you can see there's almost some violet that's getting in here sort of by default a little bit. A bit of our darker blue out just just to get that uh, filled in, so to speak. Okay, water here. Some of our dark simplies. Now we can. Well, maybe we can start to build in some details. Maybe we can do that here, and as soon as we start to add some of our lighter tones, that'll that's also gonna make a big difference. Ah, there's a plenty of blue on his face right there. Let's get the his hand over here. And then we'll have to also we don't want to forget about those clouds back there. And oh, you know what was No, we didn't use Egyptian violet. I think we did a little bit of Fanchon red and Prussian blue together. Or was there some Egyptian violet? Not not sure. I think maybe that's just enough that we, yeah, we don't want to go too crazy with any purple colors there. Let's gray that down just a smidge, shall we? And we've got ourselves a couple of, yeah, some darker clouds. Let's get a little bit more of our bluish gray into that. Okay, and a few over here. I'm gonna throw some more of me my white out here, and we'll get some of our brilliant yellow pale as well. Where did you go? You're over here, right there. And that was a big combo. 
that we did on that other landscape that I was showing you earlier. Let's make sure we can. So again, I think that we did use a boy. I don't know if we did. I think Egyptian violet was just too strong of a color there, but you can see our cyan in the sky right there. Let's have at it now with a wee bit of dry brush in here. But it's just like with the miniatures, it's not going to be quite so dry because, well, it's mixing with paint that's already there. It, it, that paint looks very dry, but as you can see, it, it's still definitely wet because, look, we can still do some mixing with that. Here's a... I'll start the hint of some more clouds over there, and then certainly over here, I think, is where we've got most of the lighter cloud action happening. Like so. Let's get some hints of lighter clouds on top of our dark there. And it, you know, none of this is any kind of a final sky either. We're just we're kind of feeling our way through this. You can see how much lighter we can still go down here. We can also bring in here, I'm gonna bring a suggestion of this little bit of the landscape back here. Uh, another one of our, this is just a flat brush right here. We might lighten that up just a bit, make it a bit more muted here. Hey, Sibstorm, how you doing? Let's see, you're painting a fish. You want to give it scale a pearl effect. Uh, so Sibstorm, now of course we love the uh, pearlescent paints. We love the uh, interference paints. Now the interference paints are very expensive, but interference powders, not necessarily so much. Also mica powders, those are relatively cheap. You could actually mix those with just regular acrylic paints too, because I'm, I'm assuming you're not using oils, but you could use those with a regular acrylic paints. You could also even you know, use something like this uh, Green Stuff World Master Medium. Mix that with those uh, mica powders. Now, you, you can check out some of the videos that I've got. Now, again, those are going to be oil-based, right? Because that's kind of what we do here. But the, the idea is pretty much the same, where we are taking, again, those uh, interference paints, the mica powders, mixing those with their oil paints. Now let's uh, oh yeah let's get there more of our blue in here and now let's see what happens with the uh, the colors has a little bit more warmth to it and let's start to work in a little bit of our lighter patterns here still going to be using the big old brushes for a while yet. Hey Aussie, how you doing? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was glad that that one actually finally showed up because uh, after the first one was all MIA, it was really nice to see that the second one did actually get there, and he got to hang out with all the other disco night haunts and such. So that was really cool, and glad that you got that one now. All right. Yeah, let's just start to work in some of our lights here. And it's kind of funny because there are times where I almost kind of switch back into my watercolor mode or acrylics mode over here. Uh, when I was, that's what I used to do back in the day when I did 2D art. So it's, it's really wonderful to have this, the oils here. And the oils are obviously let me do all the blending and mixing that I could want. Okay, that'll be a sword there. That will still be shadow. That's still got to be lighter, I think. Yeah. 
hey, Aaron Bano, how are you doing? So say we all, all of a sudden, you have your sky, but it's it's kind of still gets caught in the shadow areas here. That's really an important thing. Cannot, uh, and this is the same thing with miniatures too. This is why we work on the whole miniature all at once, not just little bits and pieces of it. All at once. So what the heck is also oh, Friday? Uh, I have a couple of things here that are all prepped and ready to go because I still got to keep doing these commission things. Still have to keep slamming through these. So we're going to at least maybe try and do these guys, these two guys tomorrow night, if possible. This here, I just, I don't know, I, I, I needed to kind of have some fun myself here. Since uh, I wasn't able to do the terrain Thursday, uh, I was once again up on ladders, still doing the home repair stuff. Uh, I think it has entered a much better phase now. Actually, the gutters are almost in painting phase. They're almost paint ready. So, see yeah, how that's starting to emerge slowly here? There's, it's like we're carving statues. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, one of my... Not one of the micro... I'll just use this one here. And I'm going to go with a little bit of indigo, maybe. And we'll let some of this red work its way in. And now it's time for maybe a little bit of our darker color to... Yeah, let's get some darker colors in here. That's the shadow being cast by the hand, by the sword. A couple of darks in here, too. Yeah, this whole thing maybe will... That get just a smidge darker. Uh, let's see, Aaron Banel, the 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 last couple of weeks that it it's been hard work, but we're we're trying to get ourselves kind of back on track. Uh, I was able to print some things, but then the printer decided that uh, there was going to be some errors. I think part of it had to do with just with the maybe even the complexity of the files. So I, I kind of cleaned out the vat and re-leveled things. So hopefully that's going to lead to some more success. I have transferred a ton of files and created a million different build plates. So that's actually really good news because I wasn't even able to do that. So uh, things definitely have uh, gone a little bit better here than they were. That's for sure. Thank you so much for asking. All right. Arm here goes all the way down here, and again, we're just letting some of this, some of the existing color, blend into what we have. So, see how that's uh, again starts to emerge a little bit here. <laughs> oh, thanks, Crobius. But that that's the the wonders of this kind of a, a method where we are, you're kind of doing this global work, you're, you're working over all the surface at one time. It does also let me kind of see, well, okay, wh where am I going with this? All right, I can have to move my hands over just a little bit. It, it allows me to kind of uh, correct things on the fly. You can see that we've got ourselves a nice light uh, stroke, brush stroke going here. And But guess what? We can still do blending brush type stuff. And that's what we're going to do here. Just blend a little bit of that. Slightly. Yeah, Aaron Bainel, uh what's the other thing that I'm... Oh, wait. Nope, that's not the... There it is. I was like, wait a minute, that's not the same brush that I was using. So being able to 3D print again, that is, oh, that is definitely really good news. <laughs> that is very, very good news. Because there's, a, I'm just a pretty much almost an entire month behind on the printing stuff. I'm going to get a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown into this. And I'm just going to steal a little bit of the Terra Rosa there. And it's we're trying not to pile too much paint on here, right? Just like with the miniatures. We're using the same brushes, the same, pretty much the same everything. 
a lot of it is eerily similar and all I want to do here is just I can find some interesting shapes ah Shaza how you doing boy it's nice to see you again uh, sorry that I haven't necessarily been able to do as many of these late night sessions here so I know that that makes it a little bit difficult for you to be able to catch some streams but thank you so much for joining me here and I hope that you've been doing well so yeah well oh that's right Kathy's doing her uh, her reading stream tomorrow that's right almost forgot about that but uh, I think she's uh, she's uh, oh yeah she's been going she kind of went back to the acrylics a little bit I think she'll be doing that for a little while uh, so Aaron Banel this is a, a piece of crescent illustration it's a hot press illustration board and it's five by seven and it's the same as what we used here on, on our this is again one of our uh, patreon videos there and then this one and the Minas Morgul those are both on YouTube right now so let me see if I can find my landscapes here just give me one quick second of course it scrolled all the way far away from all of my scenes but well, let me see if I can find my there they are so there's our Minas Morgul and there's our Mordor so both of those those are up on YouTube right now let's see if I can yeah, create a little bit of dark over here that mm, maybe even a little more blue into that. Yeah. We'll let the Terra Rosa type color and some of that blue mix here. We're just trying to create some rocky cliffs, maybe a little bit more of the blue now. As it gets closer to the sky, gee whiz, maybe even a little bit more. That's our Prussian blue here. Oh yeah, that's that. That's where we wanted our shadow right there. Uh, let's see, she's uh, doing well. Uh, moved and got a permanent studio. Worked in a morgue for a couple of weeks and got a lesson in skin tones firsthand by hap uh, helping with the autopsies. Uh, I guess Shaza, does that kind of show you? And I guess this is the best example here. Like why things are gray, like the capillaries and stuff. Why the it influences the skin tone, right? Because like here you. You have these bits of rosiness because of blood vessels coming through or you got blobs of fat or whatever and that's just going to affect how the colors are actually well, wait wait before i forget let me let me just snap a picture of this here i just want to try and get all of the different phases of this i thought that could be really fun Uh, how different health conditions affect skin tone and how decomposition works. Now, well, I guess uh, the whole decomp thing, that's a bit of inside out, right? All, all your decomp stuff, it kind of comes from within. It works its way out, sometimes more violently than others. Now, just the... Oh, yeah, yeah, now I've got this lighter color here. I'm going to let that also... That's, maybe there's not enough. Oh, dare I throw a little bit of Indian yellow into this? Ah, I'm going to go back over here to my cameo. I don't want that to get too cool. Because this needs to step in front of our Argonoth right here. We need a uh, little edge over here. Again, that's going to show where the end of our shadow is. Now, let's see, skin tones go through a lot of changes based on how the blood settles within the body, where the person died. Oh, uh, gosh, uh, what is that? Uh, it's it's the pooling, right? They can de That's how sometimes they can decide whether bodies have been moved, right, or, or if they're in their original position where they kind of uh, met their doom so to speak okay I'm just got a little bit of the thinner in there what's interesting about the this surface is it has a little bit of tooth to it but not 
I, I wouldn't really enjoy working on cold press stuff. I really enjoy working on these uh, these hot press illustration words. I've got to get more of these things. Ah, so rigor versus liver mortis. Okay. Because I, I thought there was a, a little something about that where, you know, you can kind of tell, all right, is this is this where they were? Or have there somehow things moved? Okay, and uh, again, I'm using this. Uh, now, see, this is not a filbert brush. Brush that's a, a flat right there. If we had chopped off the sides of that, we could have turned it into a filbert. But the other thing I need to do here with this, with the shadow, right, I do have to break that up in a few places. And I think we need some more something that indicates a little bit of cragginess over here. Um, do I need to drop his arm down? I might need to drop his arm down just a little bit right there. Maybe we'll get some of these brushes out of the way too. Uh, what the heck? I'll get a little bit of my lighter color here. I don't want everything to just be completely in shadow. We don't want just a bunch of shadow here and then a bunch of light over here. But again, this is that center interest that we were talking about. We want to establish this right over here. Now you can you can see if the body has been moved based on the gravitational settling of the within a body, and I don't know if there's a certain point where it's like okay, it's been this long and it's just it's not going to move. You know, it, it's settled where it is and then it doesn't move anymore from that point. Now edges are a thing. I have to always be worried about the edges here. Because as soon as we start getting too many sharp edges, well, that's going to draw your, your eye away from where we want the eye to be focused. But th this is what we call a bit of negative painting right here. We're basically painting the stuff that's not there. That's uh, actually a little bit more of a watercolory type thing, but, uh, well, we're going to employ some of that here with our oils. Hey, Rascal, how you doing? Yeah, that's right. That it starts all coagulating and such. Uh, now, uh, what was the, oh, it was Body Works. Do you, do you remember that exhibit from years ago? That kind of uh, worked its way around the world. We did actually see that. And, and that was interesting because you had the body slices and all the, the plasticine stuff that was done on them. It did give you a, a different perspective. Uh, they actually was, uh, you almost wish you could have just uh, sat there with a, a sketch pad for a while. So I'm just going to kind of start to maybe indicate a, some minor reflections here in the water. Ah, so that's what it was called, right? Body worlds? Okay. All of a sudden I was thinking, oh man, did I... Did I forget the name of it? Glad that I didn't. Now I might need to darken some of that down. But yeah, all I want to do here is look at how we're using the, the brush at different angles, right? Sometimes we're using it right on the edge, sometimes we're practically using it flat like that. And you saw we used it this way, almost like a chisel point. We've actually used the same brush, believe it or not, almost for doing some, some. And we did do some calligraphy with it. Yeah, I think we did. All right, here's the. This is one of our little homemade micro filberts here. But I can see I need to get some of my darker tone here. Might even a little, little indigo. Work its way into that. I think it can be a little darker. So can this. Yeah. And all the while, it is mixing. Ah, you know what? This That's his sleeve right there. So I think we can connect those points. And then I think that is the rocks behind him. But let's not lose sight of some of our, our red. There we go. Almost lost sight of some of the red. And then this 
cloak actually comes down a bit further here, so let's do that too. Okay, and it's it is really important to maintain all this blue shadow right here. Oh, she's a that. Uh, I, uh, she was showing me the the files there. There, well, there was a bunch. There was uh, you had a Spider Man also, right? Uh, and Spider Man was, uh, shall we say, exercising a little bit, uh, kind of hanging from a pole in a manner of speaking. There, I'm gonna oh, wait, wait, shadow here. And then not quite as high as it hits on the other one, but we need that shadow over here too. Here, maybe we'll darken it down a little more with a little touch of indigo here. Like so. Ah, uh, you have the Captain America. Now, how tall did you see? I, I can't print those out. Well, I don't know if we can get the files or not, but I can't print those out terribly big. All I have is just a junky old uh, Elegu Mars right now. Even the Frozen, uh, it's a mini, so it's not it's not the maxi, shall we say. So it won't, uh, it's not going to print anything terribly large, sadly. I'm going to let little Fanchon Red work its way there and ah, now we can start to Get a little more forceful with some of our darks here. Also, too, along our shoreline here, which will have to also then work its way into the water. Every so often, I might grab a smidge of thinner. And you can see how it almost starts to look a little bit like a watercolor, doesn't it? Yeah, as long as, uh, oh gosh, I forget what the limitations are as long as they print in, well, I think about 150 millimeters tall, maybe. But there's some figures that I would really love to do, but sadly, the, even the sub-assemblies, they're just too big to fit, which is, ah, oh, it's really disappointing because, boy, there's some, there's a lot of stuff I would love to be able to print out, but... I, don't, I really hope by this time next year I have, I don't care if it's a Saturn or a Mighty or whatever the larger printers are, hopefully I've got myself a larger scale printer here uh, by this time next year. Uh, she's a, now it's just, it's an old, I mean it's really old, because um, it's definitely not a, a an Elegoo 2. Uh, it's one that I got. Uh, it was actually sent to me at the start of 2020. So it is well... I mean, it was old when it was sent to me. And that was over a year ago. Uh, the one thing I have to say is that the... Uh, like like the whole USB drive thing. I don't know if it's uh, more prone with Elegoos than with other printers. But boy, that... Be sure to make a copy of everything that's on that stupid uh, <laughs> uh, uh, USB drive. That's for sure. Okay, so the largest piece is 127 millimeters tall. Now, see, I do have, uh, like I said, I have the Sonic Mini, the Frozen. And that's, I was kind of thinking that that could print out the bigger stuff. You know, that's going to, because uh, with the mono screen, it's not going to take quite so long. So that's probably going to, that'll be my strategy going forward is uh, using that thing to print bigger stuff. Ah, see, that, that was a little bit too much thinner in that. A little too much thinner. Here, let's uh, get back to some of our indigo here. I mean, it's not like it was going to do a pin line wash or something, but there was just a little too much thinner for what I needed to do. Now we need to make that look like it's a flowing cloak here. Uh, 
which oh we need our our dark on that side and then that side okay here let's grab some of this we'll have to drive our some of that in okay and then over here and then we'll do the same thing over there so it starts to look a little bit more like folds it it's all about patience patience don't be hasty little hobbits all in good time all the different shapes will emerge your faces here will come uh, start to be more apparent I mean they kinda already are you're, you're starting to see a little bit of that as we darken up where the eyes are and such okay with the sleeve here that's gonna be definitely one of our deeper darks Again, that's the sword. We're going to have to get some light back into that. Oh, and you're planning on getting the Mars 2 Pro. Now, well, that's got a, I'm sure that has a mono screen, right? I mean, they don't sell anything that doesn't have mono screens at this point. I guess I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they don't right now. Okay, that's going to be a sword. And we'll have this just sort of be a robe like that back to some of this uh, indigo with just a hint of the fanchion red to keep it from we don't want it to be too much of a bluish color and I have to start to maybe work out some detail here on our little uh, craggy cliff side as well It is interesting how much of the sky color ends up in your your shadows of things. I was always, even when I was doing watercolors back in the day and such, I was always kind of amazed by that. Where's my, here it is. This is our bit of our starting color over there. Nah, maybe a little, little bit more of my phthalo work its way into that. And move that. I needed to move it out this way a little bit. Same with you. And also, too, I need a little more of my sky blue color over in that shadow right there. Hey, Flight Sim. Flight Sim, uh, I'm thinking that says two days off of work. Because uh, <laughs> I think you would be way more celebratory of two days off of work than two days of work. So I think that was a, a little tricksy and false uh, phone thing right there. So Flight Sim, I hope that you're doing good. And welcome back. Uh, so it does have the, the, the mono screen. Yeah, I, I, I just don't... Uh, I don't imagine they're ever going to make things with color screens again unless maybe the, some kind of technology improves and those screens don't die quite so easily but but then again it, it increased doesn't it almost like double your speed it practically doubles print time or printing speed just by virtue of being essentially black and white I throw uh, some okay this is our indigo here just looking to create separation with our water edge here and then oh we'll just take this brush here oh, that might have been a little too much with the thinner but uh, here a little bit of my Prussian blue a little bit of my indigo hmm that might be better And we'll just uh, fill in a little bit of our dark right here. Ah, so two days off work. Okay, I, I thought so. I, I had a feeling that's how it was supposed to be. All right, where's my little my needle brush here? And let's start thinking about where these guys are going to go on their wee little boats. Maybe.
maybe we'll have one over here. But again, I don't want to lose my edge over there. Ah, it's, it's, it's really fun to be able to just uh, do all this fun little wet blending right here. Just think of all those days uh, doing the 2D art with the acrylics and such and just not getting a chance to do that. All right, here we'll lighten up a... Let's see if we can actually find some of our genuine lights over here, especially on his arm. The sword... Like so. This is still not white, actually. There's a still a little bit of color in this. On his helmet over here. Ah, I know, and his nose does catch a little bit of the light as well. Beard or hair or one of those two things. Uh, so flight sim, yep, yeah, we've, like I said, I was, I was using an airbrush, wow, in the 1990s with my watercolors and stuff, and I just, it's all disconnected right now because of everything that was going on with the weather, and that was located in the basement, and that area just had to be kind of evacuated there. Uh, I do have to use that on a lot of my terrain, so... Uh, over the coming weeks and months, I'm going to try and reset that, find a, a better, more, a better place to put that so I don't have to worry if there is some kind of sudden deluge or whatever. Uh, they have flight sim. I don't do anything super technical with the airbrush. Uh, like needle size, all that kind of stuff. I That is not something I worry myself about. So what kind of, is the airbrush clogging or something like that? Yeah, <laughs> if it clogs, I suggest just working at 50 or 60 PSI like I do. You ain't going to have any clogs there. That is, unless you do one of those uh, crazy Dutch dances or something like that, then you might have clogs for doing that. And we're still not using a tiny brush here. We don't need to go. We don't need to go to a tiny brush. At least not yet. Anyways, we can we can always do that later. Get into details and such. Uh, but these look uh, already very different, right? That's with barely any kind of uh, so-called detail stuff at all. See if he can give this guy a little bit of a mustachio there. And now we got to give them a bit more of a hand. So say we all! So say we all! Ah, thank you so much, Aussie. We could definitely use some of this. A little bit of a sub and a sip. Thank you so much, Aussie. Boy, you're not kidding, Aussie. Caress the brush. Don't crush the brush, right? Literally, this is how you had to hold this way. There was none, none of this, right? None of that. Uh, here, back to our... Uh, back to adding some more of our... Not just lights, but... See, this is going to cut through the shadow area just a little bit. Like this piece of cloth is maybe not in the shadow so much. So thank you so much for that's a it's a one year anniversary here. Aussie will give you another toast for a one year anniversary. Thank you so much. And I have to say, and I know we've said it a couple of times, with all of the craziness, right, with the the weather and and all that kind of stuff, the all of these subs and everything else that was huge. That was really really big time, uh, especially for the month of June because that, that helped pay for the, the basement repair stuff, and then all of the gutter repairs that I've been doing, again, all of that, that, uh, now it's it's way less expensive than the, than the, the waterproofing stuff, 
but still, I've just basically kind of gotten bits and bobs on Amazon. I'll go, okay, it's time to go back up on the ladder now with our little bit of uh, rubber sealing paint. Been up and down on those ladders basically every day for weeks now, at least the last three and a half weeks. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad Aussie that uh you know the oil stuff has worked out for you. And I, actually Aussie if you wanted to uh you know throw in any pics of uh pics of stuff that you've been working on in in the uh chat right there feel free to do so. Now, Armored Wolf he's uh he's on the fishing expedition right now. So he's uh not, he, so if you want to just do your shout shout out there uh, so flight sim, there, there's a lot of things that could be going on, and it's kind of like that with the oils too. It's what kind of paint are you using, what kind of primer are you using, um, that sort of thing. All of those can have some really major, uh, major effects there. It could be some old, uh, it could be some old paint. It could be some kind of weird interaction, one paint with another, maybe. There's a lot of different things that could be. Do I need? Uh, yeah, there is. There is. Ah, look at this. This goes all the way right down here. And, and sometimes I do have to put a little bit of thinner in there to get that to flow. But too much. Uh, that's going to be too much, and it'll it'll be too much in a hurry. Now here, I'm going to actually have to snip away some of the base of the Argo knot there because I want one of my boats to go there. So we're we're making a wee bit of a change right here. No big deal. That's why we don't get too wrapped up, right? That, that's why we do all of the kind of messy early stuff. Hey, Brown Town Games, how the heck are you doing? Brown Town Games, boy, it's nice to see you again. I hope that you've been doing well. And Oh, boy, what what did you post on Instagram? I, I swear I saw your Instagram post earlier today. But it's like one of those things like right on the edge of my brain. And I just cannot conjure up what it was, so I apologize for that. But Brown Town, again, that's nice to see you here. Uh, let's see, Aussie is a shocker for taking pics of the stuff, but I've got plans to take photos of more recent stuff. Ah, oh, what's your train? Ah, oh, boy, Aussie, you haven't been able to... Uh, well, I know because you, you've had the, also the, the, the medical thing, too. And I know you haven't had a chance to execute any of your, at least PPKs, right? If not TPKs, because I know how much you love... A good little party kill. I know you love them party kills. Wow, Brown Town painted the uh, oh the mo uh, obelisk mimic with the crazy eye. And I, actually, Brown Town, if you want to, you know, post your uh, Insta pics of that in the chat or whatever, that would that would be cool so people could see that. Ah, uh, you know, let's let's what the heck? Let's go with a little bit of Indian yellow into this here. Uh, so flight sim, yeah, it kind of uh, like I say, it came out like sand. If so, flight sim, I wasn't kidding about the pressure. When I said that I've got that pressure set, you know, minimum of twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, whatever. That's that's pretty much what it's set at. Hey, Trasharama, how the heck are you doing? Nice to see you. I know that you're up late. At twelve twelve forty three a.m. in the morning. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, let's see, a new camp campaign kicks off tonight. Well, Aussie, you're gonna have to give me an update. You'll have to give me an update. Uh, you know, when I do the Friday stream here, you'll have to give me an update, and uh, hopefully none are left alive. Hopefully none are left alive. Uh, and Brown Town Games was just able to post their link there, so if everyone could please go check that out, that would be fantastic. It's 
I think I think we're caught up now. I think we're caught up. So here, let's. Okay, I'm trying to get some warmer colors here because what's that going to do? That's going to juxtapose against our sky there. Sky's the limit, right? And we're also going to have to. I think we'll throw a little bit of our little slightly darker blue up in that sky area as well. We've got this here. And it has some of our darker color on it. There we go. We're just again darken that up just a smidge there. That's all. Just using whatever the heck is on that brush. Uh, let's see. I uh, promise you, uh, me. I'll uh, promise me you'll never show. Mr. Treasure Ram, any of these? Ah, you mean, uh, you don't want her to see stuff like that, the Lonely Mountain, or Mordor, or Amina's Morgul, or anything like that? It is, it is kind of funny, because there have been people, well, actually two, well, two of them have already been bought, and, uh, the, the, uh, the other one was a birthday present, so, they've all actually been spoken for. So I guess we're just going to have to keep doing these. And, and I'll be sure to send your wife plenty of pictures of these things and how they turn out. Because, you know, you want everybody to see how that works, right? Uh, the, these really have been fun, though. i, I got to say, these have really been fun. Now I think it's time to maybe just uh, look at this. Maybe start to work in some, some little waves here. All of a sudden, the water... Starts coming towards you just a smidge. Starts looking a little bit more like water and just a little less like, uh, well, random whatever. There we go. Yeah, Trash, uh, I, I think what we'll do is we'll, maybe we won't do uh, miniature painting streams for a while. We'll just do, I don't know, a couple of months worth of 2D art streams. Definitely focus on the Middle Earth stuff. And that should be great. What harm could that possibly do except to, uh, <laughs> except for Trasherama, maybe have to take out a couple of mortgages or something like that. It'll be all great. It'll be fantastic. So, yeah, we got our our wee little boats over here, and we'll get our third one over there, right? Two and then one. I don't want to get too light with this stuff. It's it's always really tempting to get too light too fast. A longer edge there. Actually, the trash ramble with all, all kidding aside, the one thing I'm trying to lead up to is doing some uh, painted backdrops for figures. So kind of starting out here and then uh, do some painted backdrops because I've really never had a chance to do that with miniatures. I've taken some of the Dark Sword miniatures, turned them into dioramas where the painting becomes the, the physical scene, but I haven't just uh, essentially done... Uh, something like this just painted behind a miniature oh and trash uh, I forget who it was but somebody was doing an unboxing so I finally got a chance to see the pirate ship yeah I finally got a chance to see the pirate ship what is it three decks or whatever uh, it's got three decks and it's got a bunch of cannons it's got all of the uh, it's got some masts on it so that was really nifty looking. Finally got a chance to see it. I was I was happy. Yeah, honestly, I was actually uh, I was just just snapping a couple of reference pictures from Instagram, uh, just seeing how different people. Uh, some of it was uh, like a long narrow thing. Some of it was wider, and some of it was forced perspective. Some of it was just clearly just a little bit of a backdrop. So I think that's going to be really fun doing some of that. Uh, so that basically, now that was actually part of the how to itself. So here, let me get to the lizard men here. It's going to take me a little while to scroll up there. 
but those were actually so the whole point of those uh, those portals right there those are actually that that's literally you could step through that and that's what you could step into yeah that was uh now of course people say you scratch sculpted those lizard men those uh, stegodon engines of the gods just so that you could paint those things because you wanted to paint some space capes i cannot confirm nor deny that is maybe why we did that or uh like sticky wicket there with that little space gate portal behind him or no that's not this is sticky wicket and oh, look at there's a painting of sticky wicket yes there's a painting of sticky wicket right there but that was actually baby babo All right, uh, I'm going to get some more of my indigo here. Uh, more dark for the sword here. Also here, where that's going to, his arm sort of separates from his body. Uh, that should indicate his cloak. His hand casting a bit of a shadow there, and then this definitely needs to be darker and a sharper edge. Look at look at that edge right there. I told you we were gonna add some some firmer darks into this. I told you we were gonna do that. Here, let's work a little bit of our again some more dark into his robe right here we got some more here to do underneath his hand and then we'll lighten this up not too much because we want it to still contrast with the sky so yeah flight sim the for me, I always kind of have used that, that stronger PSI. Now, part of it has to do with the kind of airbrush that I used to use. That was the old Pache with the external needle. Uh, with a brush like that, you just you had to crank up the pressure on that thing. Uh, looks like Aaron Banal's going to have to uh, surrender to that pillow fight. Well, Aaron Banal, that's no big deal. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, try and turn this into a YouTube video. So that you can uh, be able to check that out. Yeah, Aaron Banal, I was uh, I was really glad that uh, we didn't have. Well, you know, we're still doing the uh, what is that? The Lazy Squire stuff, but even that is almost. We don't have too many more of those left either. So then I think I can maybe get back to my regularly scheduled programming. Yes, indeed. So Aaron Banal, thank you so much for joining. Well, looky here, it's another artist that also sometimes will engage in some 2D art. That's Commander Mittens. Commander Mittens. I know that you're stuck behind the ad wall right now, I believe, so maybe I'll just kind of keep my mouth shut as I wait for you and everybody else to come in. Uh, Ravinia, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. Uh, so Commander Mittens, uh, if you want to shout yourself out, that is fantastic. Armored Wolf is uh, he's doing a little bit of fishing right now. He's on a fishing expedition. So you want to shout yourself self out, that would be fantastic. And yes, we're doing a little bit of 2D art here. These are the Argonoth here, a little bit of Lord of the Rings. And uh, here's some more of our landscapes of Middle-earth that we've done. And here's our Mordor. Actually, this one is on YouTube and also here let me see if I can find my other landscape right there so just on the YouTube channel ah there it is boom so that Minas Morgul and the Mordor those are both on the YouTube channel just James Wapple on YouTube here I'm gonna get these things out of the way I'm glad that you're doing well Ravinia nice to see you again and Commander Mittens what kind of stuff were you doing Oh, thanks. Uh, the last stream I got to see of yours, though, about two and a half, three weeks or so ago, it was really neat to see you working in 2D art, you know, uh, doing the, the digital drawing there. So that was really fantastic. Great to see. Now, oh, thanks, Ravinia. Uh, we were just discussing how 
uh, kind of what this is leading up to is I'm going to be doing some videos on how to do basically painted backdrops for miniatures because that would be really really fun um, I've, I've done I've turned paintings into miniature dioramas but I've never actually uh, been able to just kind of do a fun little painting as a backdrop like that hey Deuce and Bithron nice to see you again ah, Commander Mittens working on a Blood Bowl mini yeah, com oh, Commander Mittens definitely uh, yeah, I know you don't have pictures of it right now. You just finished your stream. But once you get some pictures of it, if you uh, want to throw those into the chat, please do so. So, Bithron, I know that you got the, the crazy work schedule go going there. Hopefully, I don't know, may maybe every once in a while you get to at least uh, do a little bit of terrain. Just glue a few pieces onto something, even if it's not that much. Ah, so here there is uh, everybody. If you please could give Commander Mittens a follow, that would be sensational. Again, uh, she has her link right there. Uh, cuss at minis on the weekend, and also cussing at video games too. Everybody's an equal opportunity offender, right? Let's see if we can get a couple of our yeah lighter tones here now. Also, two stuff like this potentially is a bit of a little bit of a, a precursor or a sketch in advance of doing oh I don't know maybe a much larger painted backdrop for one of our our terrain boards so you you literally have the river Anduin and you have the the Argonoth off in the distance because that could certainly be fun Let's see now I can start to maybe think about some details here like the the fingers and such it's not something we want to begin with. <laughs> and occasionally she cusses at digital art too. Yes, uh, it was really cool. The, again, that last stream that I had a chance to catch, you were you were doing the digital art, and it was it was really fun to see that because I really, really, rarely ever get a chance to see something like that. So it was really fun to see what you were doing. It was, of course, that was really amazing. If you want to uh, post any images of that too in the chat, feel free to do so. Uh, Bithron, oh, it's your last day off for a while. Oh, and you did get a chance to do some terrain. Okay. Uh, hopefully, maybe you're not melting quite as much as you were before. Nice to see you again, Rocket. Yeah, Rocket, I'm, uh, I'm just happy to uh, be able to enjoy... You know, some stuff like this here, a little bit of 2D art here for a change. I, I just uh, don't get a chance to do it very often, so when when we do get a chance, we really have to strike while that iron is hot. You know, I might just get a little bit more of the uh, yellow into this. Yeah, let's, let's just do that. Uh, kind of make it like it's part of this cliff here. Uh, just a little suggestion of it, almost kind of dry brushing that in here, letting it mix with what's already out here, and then as it gets up closer to the sky, it maybe becomes a little bit more of a blue-ish. Now ah, there's Commander Mint. Oh, that's that sticker he did of the Lady Dimitriescu. Ah, let's see. Oh, Rocket's working on a little bit of bases after oh some critical role. Yeah, I've never had a chance to see them, ironically enough. Well, I think if I ever get a chance to see um, the, the people Ooh, doing the RPG chance. stuff on Twitch, it's usually the Pyro Club. Do I see a Drew? Do I see a Drew? I think I see a Drew. I see a Drew in the house. Drew, how the heck are you doing? It's the, it's the close of a Thirsty Thursday, which is on War Squirtle in the house, too. Hey, Bramage, nice to see you, too. So welcome so back, everybody. We no, oh, look at this. It's bookend. Kitty's doing the sub thing. Six months of subs. That's uh, six sips out of this thing, I think. Uh, thank you very much. So guess what? We are continuing with our landscapes in Middle Earth because, you know, our lonely mountain was very fun and so was our 
little bit of Mordor, and let's get to our Minas Morgul. I don't have that one anymore. That was a birthday present for somebody. Where's my landscapes here? There you go. So there's our Minas Morgul, and there is our Mordor. Now, usually we're painting stuff like miniatures, but uh, also sometimes, well, we're doing terrain. And that's uh, we're talking about terrain backdrops, right? That's uh, something that we'll be doing. And, of course, there's the Dunlendings and Wolves of Isengard that set all that stuff on fire. Ah, let's see. So thank you so much, Drew. I appreciate that. And if, uh, uh, Drew, you want to shout yourself out, that would be fantastic. Armored Wolf is doing a little bit of fishing right now. So he's, uh, he's not quite there to be able to do all those shout-outy type things. So if you want to do that for yourself, that's cool. Uh, and there's uh, Bithron, uh, some of his terrain, some of his fabulous Lord of the Rings terrain that he's been working on. And you know, again, we do some sculpting here even. So here's our Eowyn bust that we sculpted. We painted that. And this is with oil paints, by the way, all this stuff here. And of course, you know, well, just our regular miniatures as well. We do plenty of miniatures here. Yes, we do. There's a, uh, oh, that's not Alex the Cave Troll. This is Alex the Cave Troll. Alex hasn't been out here in a while. He's, he's like, they never let me out, man. I'm like stuck in that stupid cave. And those goblins, they're mean. They're nasty. <laughs> Commander, oh, Commander Mitten's heading, uh, heading off to a little bit of lunchtime activity. That sounds good. Ah, and there's, uh, again, so Drew just did the shout-out thing. If everyone could please uh, give Drew the follow, that would be fantastic. So what we're trying to do is get a little bit of the, the warmer color that's on this cliff face out onto our statues since they're carved out of the same darn rock. So why the heck would we not have some of that same warmer color. That's also going to separate from the sky pretty much like we did here with our Lonely Mountain. Even that, that snow there, that's actually got brilliant yellow pale in it. So there's actually some yellow in that, mostly so that it brings it out from the sky. The clouds have it as well. And you can see our, our water effects kind of work in the same way, right? A, a little bit of foreshortening here. Obviously we're reflecting some of the the darker shapes here. And then we're going to be reflecting some of this too. We have to get all of our little boats there in the background as well. Uh, the Drew has been trying to hustle through getting the Battle Sisters army on together for a game this weekend. Boy, Drew, I'm going to have to... Uh, actually, if you've got uh, any Instagram pics of those, well, you know, post them in the chat. But I'll, I'll try and head on over to your Instagram there so I can see p at least some pictures of them since uh, I haven't had a chance to catch a stream. I really, I wish I could because uh, now did you do any? Uh, actually, you know what? I think you were working on those earlier in the year, weren't you? Now are you are you doing the same uh, color scheme on those? Because yeah, you were working on those earlier. I could swear I saw you doing a stream. You were painting some of those sisters. Now is there anything specific that you've been adding to it? Like some some unit filler, or have you been doing some new units? Ah, that's going to be too light. So I'm going to back off of that just a smidge here. And just do that top two fingers here. And that maybe that's it. Yes, that that's good enough. And I've got to play a little connect the dots here with the robes. Uh, and there's this, again, this lighter bit of his robe that's kind of sticking out here and catching some of that light. Oh, this one also is catching some of that light. And then it kind of gets into this darker bluish color here. We'll lighten that up ever so slightly here. like so there okay there we go we'll just uh, do a little bit of connect the dots here and uh, then I'm gonna try and put a little more of our dark here this is uh, the indigo 
oh, I don't know, a little bit of the pearling black, but then a, just a smidge of this fanchion red here so it doesn't get too bluish. Because we want to hold that, that center interest uh, kind of in this area. We don't want it down the middle. We want, you know, these often those uh, those four quadrants, right? Keep that away from the center. Also, too, not using any black. What might look really dark here, all that is, just a little bit of indigo. You mix some terra rosa into it or something like that. So, again, it doesn't just end up to being too bluish. Now, there's shadow right here. Speaking of some blue, I don't know, I'm going to take some of this here Prussian blue. We'll let some of our lighter white work its way in there, but we need to, I think, solidify this shadow area here. This is just kind of, it shouldn't be that much of a fade. It should be stronger than that, and I think that works. Ah, there we go. That's what I needed. And as I was saying a little bit ago, you'd be amazed at just how much blue can work its way into a shadow color. It's really crazy. Speaking of which, that also needs to be a little bit darker. Then maybe we can now come back in with uh, some cloud activities here. I'm going to maybe throw out a little bit more of our quick dry white over here. And now with our Argonoth more in place, let's see if we can do a little bit more with our clouds. Do we need some more? Yeah, let's get some more over here. And then the lighter this cloud is, the more our shadows take precedence. But with this all being wet oil paint, look at how we can scumble this and but this is the same blending stuff that I do on miniatures you just you maybe can't see it quite so easily because well they're like an inch tall so another reason why I'm trying to do stuff like the these landscapes here just to give people an idea uh, essentially that the, the 2d art and the miniatures they're basically the same all the ideas the concepts pretty much the same deal now that should be more of a fog, kind of a mist there. And that's very much what we did here to show distance on our Lonely Mountain. You can see we there was a hard edge there, but we cut into that with all of this lovely fog color there. And those, those lights and really killed the edges. Now this is something we also haven't done yet. Poof. Ah, there you go. Film Noir, it has value, right? So even though we've taken away all the color contrast, we still have value contrast. And even if we hold it upside down or this way, we still have a strong value pattern there. Everything connected, right? That is really important. Here we'll crank up our intensity back to where it should be. I think I can even get my brightness up a little bit now. Uh -huh, so the base color is a, a deep blue, but these are... are these are private as opposed to commission pieces. Yeah, I've had to basically ramp up uh, commission things way sooner. Some of the projects that I've had to do just because of uh, some crazy things that popped up here. But hopefully we're maybe getting past that point. And we can start to maybe focus on some of the things we were originally focusing on. Let that get maybe a little bit brighter there, and then let's hit a get a couple more of these clouds here. Uh, let, yeah, what the heck? Let's do something here too. And we can always come back again with our blending brush and do some more blending on these. But you can see the clouds kind of flowing this way. And then as they get back here, they start to almost flatten out a little bit. That's another way to kind of get the distance. Show yourself a, you know, that that horizon line is very deep. 
Ah, uh, Von Doodle Sack has returned. Ah, uh, you were just painting oils on 2D for the first time a few minutes ago. Ah, uh, uh, so Von Doodle Sack, what, well, I guess, what was the topic? What was the topic? And then were you, were you working on canvas, uh, masonite? What kind of a surface were you working on? Uh, I, I might, actually, I think we, well, I have some canvas boards. But I, I really do love the the hot press illustration board here, I gotta say. Well, it does take me back to the old watercolor days. And we'll, we'll show maybe some of the watercolor stuff, too. So this is what we used to do back in the day before miniature. Oh, I just painted a Google photo of a LARPer. wanted to practice in non-metallic metal. Oh, Von Doodlesack, you can't go wrong, right? Uh, those LARP guys with the armor out in the woods and everything. I mean, it's just amazing how you, you can see all the reflections in the armor and such. So this is what we used to do back in the day. So there's a little bit about, again, watercolor on hot press watercolor board. That is the same thing. Now, it, that's back when I used to use an airbrush, too, for painting. Then we're getting into some of our pastels over here. And this is actually another acrylic. Then this is an oil painting that I did when I was about 13 or so. And I think now we're getting back in a couple more of those watercolors on hot press watercolor board. So that's what we used to do back in the day. And maybe, you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe we start doing more of this 2D art thing because every time I show pictures of, of what we painted here, everybody keeps saying, where can I get one of those? Where can I get one of those? I, I have a feeling if the Internet was what it is now, back in, well, 2001, we, maybe the 2D art business would have continued. I don't know. But yeah, that was uh, that's what we used to do for a living. Uh, was was two D art. I'm gonna maybe. Yeah, I like the idea of the cloud being right there. Uh, so yeah, I know uh, Armored Wolf is he's always sending me uh, pictures that he finds on Instagram of the the armor guys because they do such a fantastic job and. It's always amazing to see what is reflected. I know he sent me a picture of a couple of folks uh, basically kind of dressed up in the your Greek phalanx style armor, but yet they all looked like a bunch of uh, jolly green giants because they were in the woods and everything was green. There was nary a bit of gold to be seen or bronze. Everything was green. Which is only appropriate because, well, it's that it's reflecting everything around it. I'm gonna see if I can't get some some more lights over here on uh, this side of our cliff before we maybe come back with some some more darks on the other side of that. Yeah, just light enough here to bring it forward also edge right see how there's a sharp edge there each of these edges brings it forward that soft edge whoosh, all that stuff puts distance there and it's a uh, there's no magical thing behind it here it's all a flat surface but edge control makes a big difference as we all come in speck of spud how you doing uh, it, it's uh, things are definitely well. They've been m more on track this week, that's for sure. And I am extremely grateful for that. Oh, most definitely grateful. And hopefully things have been going good for you. And well, we can say Happy Friday here because it is now Friday. Uh, as our Von Doodle Sack has been paying attention to the colors on that reflective metal. And boy, it is shocking, right? So lots of green and blue on that breastplate. Well, even here, one of the reasons you got all this blue reflecting there, that's that's the distance, right? That's the sky in the distance. You're, you're basically looking through the atmosphere, and that's giving you that sense of all of that, that blue that you're seeing. Now this needs to be taken away. That's better. So now that looks like the 
shadow of his arm there. That was a little bit too far out before. I'm going to move that back in. I might even cut down on that just a bit more, or even move the whole thing this way a little bit. Now we're using the same same exact craft brushes, everything that we would use on a miniature, the same paints, just our oil paints right here. Everything's the same. Instead of a miniature, though, we are working on a little piece of uh, hot press illustration board. And we'll also have to get some of that reflected into the, into the water here. I will add uh, a little bit thinner to make sure that this flows like so. Might even lighten that up a little bit here. And this is what's going to get that, that impression of some, some wave activity. It's just like what we did on that other landscape that I showed you. But here, there is, again, a little bit of the uh, thinner added just so we get a, little, a nice little flow to it. So, see, again, we're reflecting some of that lighter color right here. Let's see, I had trouble doing hard edges, especially with the weights. Well, Von Doodle Sack, uh, part of it is it's, it's the brush that you're using. So, you know, something like this that has a chiseled edge, that is one way. But any time you add, uh, say, some thinner to that paint, it's going to flow a little bit easier, and you're going to have an easier time getting a hard edge. Whereas if that brush is very dry, well, just like uh, any acrylic dry brush, it's going to do the same thing, right? It's going to get you that... See, like here, we're doing a bit of a dry brush. See how that's a soft edge there? Now we've got a, a little bit, again, more of the thinner on the brush. See how we've got ourselves a harder edge right there? And we're going to maybe do that again right over here. So see how that creates a harder edge? And look, I can even just uh, take my finger, blend some of that away. Uh, you know what? This, see here we not only need some harder edges, but we have to cut into that shadow there. It can't just be a block. Otherwise, it's not going to be much of a rocky surface. We need to create the impression of a rocky surface here. And uh, you know what? That needs to, that's what's missing there. That had to turn in this way. Okay. That's what we didn't quite have right. I think we might we need to do the same on this Argonaut over here. Uh, did see? Uh, we do need a little bit of a cheekbone right there. So let's uh, grab some of this lighter tone. Give him a bit of a cheekbone, and then the helmet needs a bit of a nose there. And we might just get some really. Ah, uh, look at how much lighter we can go here. So I always like to save these lightest colors. I like to not just dive right into those. See, there's a nice little hard edge right there. Well, that got a little bit lighter too, and we'll have to do the same on our other Argonaut. Yeah, I think, uh, like, like you were saying before, I think that is one of the... That's uh, definitely one of the neatest scenes, right, in in the Fellowship movie. All right, well, Chesa, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, it was nice to see you again. Really nice to see you. And well, you'll have to show me what you do with with the uh, with your Captain America, and and his modesty shield. Is that what is that what you're gonna call that, Shaza? His modesty shield. Or, or the, is that just his Twitch clothes right there? So Captain America and his modesty shield.
so here again we've got the this has some there's some weight on this brush but it has been thinned down and that gives us a little bit better flow right so now we can really start to sear these uh, these details start to emerge more and more each uh, each time around each pass here and it's not to say I can't go back the other way and get some darks okay here this sword it needs a hilt right here and then we'll yeah okay and uh, we'll have to get some dark underneath that too but no big deal I'll cut into this and let his again uh, like folds of his robe here Get a little bit of our lighter color. Let that continue down into the shadow area here. Uh, well, we're going to be probably coming back in with some of our darks there too to re-emphasize kind of the edge of where that shadow is. But at this point, with everything, you know, we're we're past the the point where things are sketched in. Now we're going to really try and get some of our, our solid details in here. I know some folks, they say, oh, well, that's the fun part. Well, you know what's kind of the fun part is actually when it's all messy. And that is part of the Book of Wapple. There are things, uh, they must be messy before they can be neat. And it, this was certainly was a mess, right? And, you know, when I do the Instagram, I, or sorry, I think uh, maybe either tomorrow or the next day when we do our Instagram pics of this and you can see the you know uh, all of the the step-by-step -step pictures there you'll see how it really went from pretty much nothing to something a little more like a, a recognizable image hey atomic walrus nice to see you back boy atomic walrus uh, it is funny that I had made some stickers uh, for, actually for a ReaperCon way back in 2019. I, I made the first two chapters, basically. All right, uh, now speaking of, well, let's, let's grab some of our, some darker stuff over here. There. More like that now is, uh, it starts again, look like more of it's part of uh, his robe. Uh, so Atomic Rollers, uh, just having a little bit of fun here with some landscapey type things. I've got a whole bunch of figures that I've been prepping the, the last couple of days. Now, tomorrow night, I think I, I still have to do a couple of more of those, what are they, Lazy Squire Games commission figs. But then Saturday, I have a whole bunch of uh, ring wraiths. So we can kind of have some fun doing some painting of black. Now, Van Doodle Sack, nope, not really changing uh, brushes or anything like that. Now, I might be changing brush types. So, like here, you know, where I, I need a chiseled edge, I'll grab this kind of a brush. Obviously, for smaller things, I'll have this brush right here. You know, basically, all I'll do is take a paper towel and do something like that. And then just get the next next color in there so yeah atomic walrus what are the here they are i think these are a couple of the figures here so these are those uh i think yeah we, you, i've been showing you this one right with the bendy sword for like two weeks and then there's uh this guy here so we'll be painting these two guys tomorrow and then like i said we have a whole bunch of ring wraiths that i've been prepping and that'll be uh, yeah. Those are also commission things, but maybe I can even sneak in some of my own stuff there too. I hope so. Uh, I guess that that only happens if I'm able to find some part. Was the, oh the Knight of Umbar? That's that's the ring wraith. That's uh, one of my figures. So here I'll take a little bit of the Indian yellow. Yeah, just I want this to be that warmer yellow color here. 
Now we've we've done an awful lot with our lighter tones. How's about we we start to come back the other way here with some darker tones? We'll grab some of our uh, Indian and his French Indian red. And let's get some sharper uh, edges here too. Also, we need our third little boat over here, like that. And then we need to, okay, okay, just where does that bit end? And I think I could use maybe just a couple, a little darker brush strokes in there. There we go. Yeah, that, that helps. Oh, on the on the Battlefleet Gothic files, uh, it, it seemed to be okay. I, I'll have to dive into it a little bit more. Um, but something's better than nothing, right, uh, Atomic Walrus? So I, I think I might, you know, you can always just get a couple and then see how they see how they do now uh, just like the medberry miniatures i wasn't quite sure until i actually i just got a few of them like the candish ones printed those out and and those seem to be really good so i think we'll just you know, get a couple of them if they don't work out they don't work out but it certainly would be uh well, of course, the uh, atomic wall was just like you, you heard me talking about. The thing I wanted to do most was the bases on them so that we could do some spacecape type things. And, oh, actually, you know, you should, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on the blog. Yes, it is. I actually painted a giant backdrop or a, 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 a table. It was a huge spacecape table for Battlefleet Gothic. That's right. It was just, it was like six feet by four feet. I think it's technically the biggest painting I ever did. Yes, that's right. Forgot all about that thing. Now this is actually going to have a little bit of blue in it here. It, it's a shadow, but it's distance, right? We want these to come forward, those to go back further a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same over here too. I'm going to maybe get some of that a little bit away from the reddish color. And also to add uh, some other shadow areas to this. Maybe not cast by him. Okay, once again, working with some of our lighter tones up here. The clouds. I don't do anything more with the clouds here. Uh, it looks like a flight sim is posted a little bit on the... Is that the Ferrari there, uh, flight sim? And now I'm going to try and get a little bit more of my rounded shape on here. Ah, there we go. Uh, boy, a uh, flight sim. Uh, now, of course, I haven't seen any F1 stuff in a couple of years. It was still really weird to see that halo, which apparently they've got that same halo now on the Indy racing cars too. Uh, I would imagine, well, obviously it's a, it's a safety thing. It just was really weird to see those halos on the uh, on the F1s. And of course, I haven't seen any, any Indy racing in years now. So it's, if I actually ever see any, it's going to be a big shock to see the halo on those uh, those cars too. Uh, basically, until all of the crazy stuff is over, I'm just kind of treating sports like, uh, well, like the 1940s or World War One or whatever, where it's all just kind of uh, make-believe. Yeah, I guess that, I, I don't know if the, the has the halo actually made a difference. I guess I mean, has it? really made a difference or is it just while well, we think it made a difference all right so some of these clouds back here i'm going to try and really make some fine small clouds back here and we'll even maybe uh 
blend some of those a little bit so I get where our landscape gets goes further and further back. Yeah, so the last, basically, the last Indy race I saw was probably the 2019 Indy, Indy 500. So that was a couple of years ago. I might get a couple of more of my light colors into, yes, I'm going to do that here. What the heck? Let's just do that. Why not? Uh, which is way better than the stupid halo. Why I keep, for some reason, all of a sudden I was thinking this was like Monday or whatever. And uh, and that the Drax would be streaming or something. I just realized it ain't Monday. But it is now, well, now it's Friday. And again, what we'll be painting here, let me dig out these couple of guys. So, uh, so these are from, I uh, almost said the printing goes over on. These are from Lazy Squire here. We'll be working on these two guys. Uh, where is a good spot for this? I think right ah, here might be a good spot. Because again, we're trying to carry the light this way, right? And this might just be a good place for it right here. And I'm going to go back to my reference. There we go. I just want to make sure I can see all of my little boats over here. My little boats. And then we'll try and get a bit of an edge right there. See, that's going to make it look that's the water kind of going up against the the side of the rocks here kind of a way not we don't want it crashing against the side of the rocks but we need a little indication of something over here so again just sometimes that's it right keep it simple it's what we did on our other landscape over here where we did the water so see that that little bit of a lighter uh, shoreline right there that's all it takes it, it's a suggestion. We do the same thing on the miniatures. It's always just a suggestion. Gonna grab me something to drink here, real quick. But boy, yeah, I'm looking at some of these other illustrations of the Argonauts, and they just uh, some of them are actually more realistic looking as far as their scale. But then the shapes of them are just how in the world could they have sculpted that? It's like n there's no one combination of, well, it looks more feasible as far as the actual building process, but it just looks kind of strange and not part of the landscape. Oh, actually, here, wait a minute. Uh, boy, we I've kind of neglected to take these pictures along the way here. Oh, well. I mean, I, I took a... Of several early on. I guess that's the most important part is the stuff early on. But yeah, we'll uh, try and post up those pictures to Instagram and in maybe a day here. I don't know, maybe, maybe even tomorrow or at least by Saturday. Yeah, I think a couple of lights over here too. Again, to create some smaller shapes in it is like we did over here but not as pronounced because again that's the light hitting over here but this this is the kind of profile in shadow right we need to have interesting stuff going on in those shadows if they're boring and that I'm talking about a miniatures too I'm not just talking about 2d art we're talking about miniatures because miniatures most definitely have shadows. Does this? Ah, oh, you know he does. I need to maybe get a little bit of a lighter tone here. 
and his face. Not just entirely dark there. That's what we're missing here, maybe. Yeah. So I'm really glad that I did uh, put that darker part of the cloud right over here just because it made that stand out more. And we used our brilliant yellow pale. That wasn't uh, white over there. I, I really do try to stay away from using white as much as possible, whether it's a miniature or whether it's a painting. Because as soon as you get into things that are white or black, you, you've basically wiped out color. White and black, they have no color to them. Whereas even a very yellowish white or a very bluish white, they still have some kind of color to them. Some color is better than none. So again, I'm going to try and get a little bit of bubbly here. And that's to kind of create that mist. There we are. I'm so <laughs> so tempted to kind of come over here with all that, but nope, no, got to stay away from those. Uh, I will, however, I think, uh, just get this little wave right here, a little bit of a crest on that. Yeah, all right. And we haven't done this in a little while, probably a good 45 minutes since our last little film noir. Yeah. So now you don't see the warm colors here, the cool colors here. The sky and that are practically the same value, but what separates them, what separates them is the fact that this is a cyan and that's more of a yellow. And we'll bring the co we'll bring back our color here and that should really illustrate that warm here. And then you got your blues up here. So again, color temperature makes a difference. Emphasize that all the time. I know it, it's kind of ad nauseum. I say it over and over again. Well, that's because it's important. If it weren't important, then I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't make that big a deal about it. But also, yeah. Uh, that same kind of lighter color here along the shoreline. Maybe almost even make it look like there's some some rocks, uh, you know, again breaks in the shoreline. And how did we initially create these shapes? It was uh, this big old brush here, which we just kind of almost was doing a little bit of tap tap tap, and turning it along the way, and it created just some generic shapes that I thought, well, okay, I'll take advantage of those now because it was a, a better randomizer. It was a much better randomizer giving me that, like, okay, um, whereas a, a human just has a tend to, tendency to make too many patterns out of things. I might even hit the end of the sword there with a little bit more of a light. That sword handle. I guess that could still be his beard there. I've got my lighter. I'm, I'm just looking at these clouds. Do I want to? Maybe. Uh, I don't want to make these too too light here. Also, don't want to make the edges of them too sharp. But I think uh, this level right here. I think I need to bring these clouds further down here. Uh, I'm actually going to take some of my uh, basically the dirty magenta over here. And even a couple of these clouds. I'm just looking over at the reference there, and I think it could use that. Because now 
these clouds, I don't want them to go from the puffy clouds to all of a sudden the really flat versions, right? Uh, so Space Toy, that's one of the things that I'm trying to lead into is uh, actually using painted backdrops on minis. Now, of course, you know, we did this on the Ohura bust right here, and we've done a couple of these type of things. And I think Space Toy, I don't know if you saw the Lizard Men earlier, but here, let's, uh, let's show you the scratch-built engines of the gods and that sort of stuff. Let me get up to my Lizard Men right here. Give me one second. And time for some lizards and here we go so those two engines of the gods you can see the portals that we painted on those and uh, the, there was actually a, a thing on the back too so both sides of those portals have images painted on them and again those are scratch built engines of the gods and then you can see here on our uh, baby babo right there see that space gate behind him so a uh, nice little portal right there I'm going to have to try and make me another one of those because uh, that was another, uh, all that stuff was sold off uh, years ago. Now, and actually, there's our, uh, there's our Sticky Wicket, the general of the army. And yes, that's a painting that I did of him back in 2009. You can see a games day there. I just grabbed some miniature paint while we were at games day. So Space Toy, that is definitely something that I want to do. Now what I have done, and you can look on the blog, what I have done in the past is actually take a painting and turn it into a miniature diorama. So instead of it being flat, uh, because uh, the Dark Sword miniatures are based on things like Larry Elmore art, so what I would do is basically take Larry Elmore paintings take the miniatures and then construct the environment of the painting and put the miniatures in that 3D environment. Ah, there we go. That's what we were missing a little bit here. Let's get a little bit more of this now. Yeah, a bit more here. With the... And that's our dirty magenta right there. So those portals were really fun, and uh, I, I think there might be some step-by-step -step articles on the blog about those guys. Well, there certainly, I think, are step-by-step -step articles that kind of show the how they were sculpted. So that might be something to check out. And again, Armored Wolf is not here, but it's just WapiliusBlogspot.com. It should be very easy to find. It's just my Twitch name. I think there might even be a link to the blog on my Twitch channel, profile, whatever that is. So we're not just lightening that up. We're also softening some of those clouds there. And I might just play with a little more of our lighter tone over here to kind of make it look ah yeah I don't want to sharpen that edge up too much but we, we also want to have it look like there's sunlight coming from this direction right so something like this there we go Yeah. All right, look at that. Uh, planning some funky uh, backdrops. The wake, uh, Wacom pin can be put away. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, and there's some busts that I have that I thought could also, like you say, be real interesting with a painted backdrop. Uh, especially with Loot Studios, now I kind of have an unlimited supply of busts, so I, and I could even print those at different sizes. And of course, there, there's, uh, well, like I said, I think one of the first ones I wanted to try and do was Saruman, or Sauron, right, uh, where he's at, you know, with the seal lure and such. And, you know, maybe paint something like that in the distant background could be really fun. Hello, 
little hobbits, spark my ganja. And thank you so much. I am eternal seeker. Hello, little hobbits. I. You shall not pass. Um, they better not pass too far, cause there's like a really dangerous waterfall. Careful, dudes. Uh, thank you so much. I'm a turtle seeker. I appreciate that. Uh, well, obviously Gandalf does too. And he also had some warning or some friendly advice for our intrepid fellowship there. I might just lighten that up a little too. We also, again, any brush can be a blending brush, right? Here's a one of our number eight round craft brushes. It now is serving as a Lovely little blending brush here. And again, that's uh, serving to create this this light coming through the clouds down onto our Argonoth. Once again, we'll hit some of this with our blending brush, and it's got, got no paint on it. Clearly, there's, there's no paint on that brush. Oh, thanks so much, I'm a Turtle Seeker. I really enjoy these. Now, actually, if you want to uh, see how a couple of those were painted, let me get to my, there we go. So both of these are on my YouTube channel. I'm just James Wapple on YouTube. And we, uh, the first one I did was the Minas Morgul. And then the second one was the Mordor uh, backdrop there. And one of the reasons that we're using here, let me see if the, I uh, can't see the painted backdrop there. Maybe my Easterlings will show you that. Uh, and we're going to be doing way more of our painted back. Actually, we also have to do, well, I want to do something like a painted backdrop for our Witch King. But, of course, we have to do a Moria scene, right? So I have to do a lot of painted backdrop for my Moria stuff because, hey, Moria, right? Uh, let me see if I can find my, ah, there they are. So, yeah, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a painted backdrop behind there. And I know it gets kind of closer here. It's hard to see. Yeah, there you go. You can see a little bit of that painted backdrop there. So we need to do Ascilius. We need to do all kinds of uh, fun painted backdrops like that. Uh, and thank you so much, Topulus. Here, let's... Uh, thank you so much for that raid. So sorry uh, sorry there, uh, Topulus. I didn't mean to uh, cut off your raid sound, but we'll give you this. Here, we'll, we'll do this. Ascilius... There you go. So that's that's not quite the usual sound that happens for a raid. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Uh, and thank you so much, uh, Syrup. Uh, thank you so much. Hello, little hobbits. I, um, hey, guys, there's orcs following you. Can't you see the orcs? Oh my gosh, this is terrible. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Topulus. I appreciate that. So yeah, sorry that, well, actually, uh, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world because there is that stupid ad wall, right, that everybody has to fight their way through. So while we were screwing around showing Easterling, uh, Easterlings in front of that backdrop there, uh, most folks were probably still dealing with the ad wall. And if everyone could please give Topulus a follow, that would be spectacular. We want to support especially all of our fellow late night streamers or early morning, as the case might be. And uh, Topulus, I know you just finished your stream, but if you got any Instagram pics of work and progresses that you have going on, uh, feel free to drop those in the chat. That way people can see what it is you're working on. And we are using our oil paints here. And, well, we clearly paint a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff. I mean, we have tons and tons and tons of Lord of the Rings stuff that we paint here. I mean, whether it's, uh, oh, look at this, it's Gandalf the Fool. Or well, we, have, we have tons of our Rohan stuff that we've painted. These are some converted, just took regular writers of Rohan, gave them new cloaks, helmets, gave them banners. And then, of course, we, well, we do some uh, sculpting of some busts here, too. This is very combustible. This is AON right here. We sculpted that and then uh, painted that the very next day. That was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks, Gallo Fire. So I'm really looking forward to, well, basically what I want to do is paint all those scenes at this scale, 
kind of see what's what's involved with that type of a scene and then we'll paint them well we need backdrops that are about two feet tall and four feet wide at least 18 inches tall but well actually more five feet wide because a Lord, typical Lord of the Rings board is going to be well four by four and we need at least one foot of overhang on either side Ah, there you go. So uh, pe everybody, please go check out Topulus's Discord link, what they were working on. Ah, so Topulus, I, uh, I'm i not able to click on it myself. If you if you could just describe to me what you were working on, that would be really cool. I can, uh, I can visualize that then. Uh, do I need to lighten this up? What the heck? We'll just uh, throw a little bit of that right there. I uh, just started on a Strata wheelchair mini. Not a whole lot of progress tonight. Well, yeah, just sometimes Topulus uh, streams are more productive, or sometimes there's just a lot of uh, chaos and hilarity going on, and maybe maybe a little less of the production. Let's see how long. Oh yeah, uh, we've been working on this for three hours forty nine minutes. It was just a piece of illustration board like this. There was no drawing on there. There was no nothing. And, well, sometimes we work on some very large-scale miniatures, too. Uh, this is a 3D print right here. And all of, all painted, again, with the oils, using essentially traditional artist oil paints, Gamlin, Windsor Newton. Uh, I really especially love the Williamsburg. It's pricey, but, boy, it's really fantastic stuff. And we use it on big miniatures, small miniatures, medium miniatures. We use it on all of them. And it actually, it's really nice because it's very, very luminous. It has uh, fantastic lights and darks. It is super durable. It is incredibly durable. And that's why things were painted, buildings and such, painted with oils because... They just last so long. And you, you can do your wet blending, right? You can do plenty of that. Dow Lakes Topulus, yeah, all of the uh, all of these things were painted and well this was a two hour long tutorial. So yeah, that was uh, about a, a two hour thing right there. And you can see here's some of our other, well, we do also build terrain. So here's some of the terrain that we have constructed. This was probably the most complex piece so far, the Rohan Windmill. Archery range, not all that far behind it. Uh, we also, well, we do some you know, decent-sized critters there. Here's some of our Iron Hills doors. Those were printed out. Uh, there's our Treebeard figure. Lately, we've been painting an awful lot of the Empire of Dust and Basilean ships, also the Orcs. And here's uh, well, some of our Song of Ice and Fire stuff that we have done. And let's see, let's get, oh, there's our uh, Kingsman, Rose Knight, all painted on stream. We do historical stuff as well. And uh, some large, that's a 75 mil figure right there. And here's some of our, th uh, more of our Song of Ice and Fire. Then we got Thousand Suns right here. Really enjoyed doing the freehand on the bases. And here's some of our big old trolls that we've done. Again, all with the oils. These were also oils. We painted these on stream. Those are all in metallics. Uh, using a lot of interference paints. And then there's our Arcanite Shadow Stalkers. So just it's kind of like it's a YouTube channel. Um, just look back at all of those past highlights all of the every single one if possible is saved so it's kind of like a YouTube video um, but but no ads because well it's twitch and not YouTube I do have a YouTube channel there are hundreds of tutorials on there and I also well we like that other landscape that I showed you that was part of a patreon tutorial and that was uh, again to illustrate huh illustrate how those concepts of 2d art and miniature painting they really do sync up really well 
lights, darks, edges, temperature, color temperature, color intensity. It's important in paintings. It's also important for miniatures because we like to do this with our a little bit of film noir. So now you don't see the warmer colors. Look at that. The This and the sky, they're practically the same. What's the difference? The difference is in the color temperature. Yellow instead of cyan. And we also like to use some of these guys here as a, another fun little example. So when we take the color away here, I mean, yeah, you can see that, that it's slightly lighter, but what really made the difference is the orange, that super bright orange fluorescent versus that cooler, darker green. These, again, were all painted in oils. You can check those out. And here's a, another example of the really bright, intense greens. This is one of our, our sculpting streams that we did here. Took Tomb King's bits, part of uh, an Army of the Dead infantry guy and uh, sculpted a cape on him, sculpted some hair on the horse. Uh, we do 40k, War Cry, Song of Ice and Fire. Well, we did some Legion stuff. We're trying to actually find ourselves some uh, 3D printable, oh gosh, uh, Battlefleet Gothic ships, so maybe we can uh, have some fun with that. I know I've got, oh, I've uh, actually painted some Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff in previous YouTube lives, but we'll see if we can maybe paint some of that with the oils, too. It's been a while since we last had a chance to paint any of the uh, MCP stuff. All right, I think we got our, our mist settled down in there. clouds don't want to bring up any more of the lighter tones there but here's another thing we can sort of uh, maybe have some fun with and that's potentially just taking a again one of our number eight round craft brushes here and maybe we even take a little bit of our thinner and we can sort of reactivate our paint a little bit here we did that on that other landscape ah uh, see that so we just kind of reactivated that paint, and now that gets a little bit softer. It's a little bit less of a dry, brushy look. But look at how I'm holding the brush. There's basically just two fingers on that brush. That is it. But see, now that a uh, little bit softer look there, not quite so much of a dry brush. And this is the fun thing that you could do with the oils, right? Basically reactivate them with a little bit of thinner here. Again, doing a little more soft blending here. You notice that we didn't just do layers here, right? Uh, when we're painting miniatures with the oils, we don't do any layering because it's just not necessary. You can just take one color and uh, maybe it's significantly lighter than another color, or it's even red and green. You just mix them together. That is the nifty thing about the oils, is let the oils do the work for you. So here, all we got, again, is a little bit of thinner on that brush. And look at how it's kind of activating the color that's here, and it's really easy to get ourselves a nice soft blend out of that. Look at that. Look at that. It was, I basically kind of had to wait a while to do this. I wanted to get everything set before we kind of did a little bit of our kind of magic final blending there. Hey, Angry Ham, how you doing? Uh, well, Topulus, uh, yeah, just uh, start out simple, right? Start out simple. And... Even when you do try to do an oil painted miniature, maybe, well, something that's got a big old cape on it is always, well, that's always a fantastic kind of first oil uh, piece there. And then also you can maybe just take one light color and one dark color and just use those two. Because when I was learning how to do watercolors back in art school, they gave us one color. They said, here, you get this brown. 
you're doing everything with this one color of brown because they didn't want us mashing our face into the wall, learning the watercolors, plus doing all kinds of color theory stuff. So they said, nope, you're, you're not doing all this. You're just getting this one color. I think by the halfway point of the year, we only had three. And they, nope, they said, you, we are not going to let you struggle with fooling around with all these colors plus the watercolors too. Well, you, once you get used to the watercolors, then you can start having more colors on the palette. Angry Ham's got three and a half weeks left to work, and Pendrake is here too. So Pendrake, I hope that you're doing well. And this what we just did with that little bit of blending. We did the exact same thing up here. It looked very much like a dry brush. All I did was I took one of those bigger brushes, put a tiny bit of thinner on it, and then just uh, kind of reactivate it and uh, kind of softened up those edges. So, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, yeah, it was. It was three hours, 59 minutes ago. It was literally just a blank piece of illustration board. We we did the drawing on there, and then we basically did what was tantamount to a pre-glaze, and then we just started to build up the shapes, right? Building those up little by little. Uh, and again, now, Saturday, most likely what we're going to be doing is those... Uh, is the ring wraiths because that's another kind of a commission type of a thing uh, but people are always asking me about painting black well we're not just gonna paint those things black they're gonna be this is another one of the things we did with oils right here you can see there's lots of differences right there's blues greens browns almost some magentas in there that's how we're gonna be painting those ring rays not just black so yep yeah, Pendrake this is oils the exact same oils that we use for uh, painting the miniatures nothing different it's just uh it's a little bit flatter than the average miniature just a teensy bit flatter i see this the the swirling brush stroke that i'm using this is the same brush stroke that i use on the miniatures when i am blending paint together I, this is another reason why i thought it, it this, this 2D stuff would be good because it's kind of hard sometimes to see this on a miniature. Here, maybe a little bit easier to see what the heck is going on. Now, so Angry Ham, uh, three and a half weeks left of work. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's going to leave a lot of time for some serious miniature painting then. You just have to replace that job with painting miniatures all the time. Constantly painting miniatures. Uh, I'm sure everybody has uh, enough miniatures stockpiled to last them through many years of retirement. So finding something to occupy time will not be hard, will it? Okay, now that I've done that up there, I might soften a few things over here, too. Again, that's with the same brush. It's got a little bit of the thinner on it. Soften this up, too. I usually don't do this on miniatures because, well, they're so small and they are not quite so absorbent of a surface but here yeah, you get this very not absorbent surface there see gallifier has enough miniatures to paint so that my kids and their kids uh, is it sort of like a, a klingon curse or whatever or a klingon thing that uh, goes through 10 generations or something like that so you basically have the klingon multi-generational uh, painting approach there and here's another couple of areas where I'm just kind of softening up some of these things. Just, you know, reasons, right? Uh, 